It's Brian Preston, the money guy. I worry that the pandemic caused a quick reset where people are saying, oh, no, no, I got to I got to change something and I got to make an immediate rash decision. So we want to kind of walk you through before you make that decision, what are some questions you should ask before you make the decision to jump ship? Yeah, I mean, it, look, and I'm, I, I hate the glass half empty, but I think it's powerful to go deeper and explore what makes you unhappy. Mm-hmm. So the first thing I would ask people is, What are the pain points with your current job? Let's actually do a deeper dive into what is making you so unhappy. Now, would you agree, Brian, that every job, every vocation, every job that you've ever had, there are probably things about that job that you did not like? Yeah, right. I mean, there's not, there's never been a perfect, other than uh, being on the Money Guy show, there's never been a job. (laughs) That you just loved every single part about it, right? That's just a natural cause of being in the workforce. It's going to be something. But some of those pain points are much more severe, and some of those pain points are much more minor. Wouldn't you agree with that? I do. But I think you also need to be take it out of the conceptual and actually put it on paper. Mm-hmm. And the fact that I want you to actually, you know, maybe it's the accountant in me that I'm always doing T-charts where I'm taking the positives and the negatives. I want you to write down, so is it low pay? Is it the lack of flexibility? you don't have any chemistry or you don't like your coworkers, mm-hmm. actually go deep with why do you dislike your current work experience? And then that can lead to doing a happiness check. And, th- and this is an important part because I do want you to have a path forward, to have fulfillment, to have happiness, because I don't want you doing something for 20, 30 years that you just a drudge and, and just not fun. But you have to be very methodical or well thought out with your planning. Yeah, you've told me, Brian, in your past, there have been times where you've had jobs where like on Sunday night, you'd just be chewing your fingernails. You would just mm-hmm. be like, man, the weekend went by too fast and I'm about to get into this week again. And I just don't want to do that. And I think you said then that was your sign that, man, something ought to change. You, when you did your happiness check, you recognized, man, uh, it, it was more of an unhappiness check. How bad is it on Sunday night before I go back into the workforce? That was a sign that something might ought to change in your life. Yeah, now I do think there are big macro indicators like that. Chewing my fingernails to, to the point of being super stressed mm-hmm. out, you know, having hard bosses, things like that. Those are things that maybe you can't fix, and this is the perfect opportunity, but you need to at least document what those things are so then you can move to the next question to make sure you're not making a rash decision. Sure. And that next question is, what are you leaving behind? Yeah, I think this is one. So often we get caught in the the grass being greener on the next thing, the grass, uh, the next opportunity being better, the next thing being better, not recognizing all the stuff that you've brought along with you, experience in a specific career field, a degree that aligns very well with one, certifications that you've earned over the years. It's a big charge to say, you know what, I'm just going to walk away from all that and go do something else. You really need to understand uh, you spent a career or part of a career becoming an expert there just to shift into something totally new m- might not be as smooth or as seamless as you think. Well, I always, because we, look, I, I love how a bound wealth has formed. Mm-hmm. We we have all kind of associates and planners and others that have come from other working careers. We have doctors. We have actually an MD that's yep. a financial planner. We have, um, you know, musicians, producers, you know, from the music industry, engineers. I mean, all these things. But every one of those people that made those big jumps and those big career changes, they did walk away from a lot of other stuff. Mm -hmm. And I I just think before you leave behind to start a new, fresh thing, because sometimes the shiny side that we always hear, the the grass is not always as green Mm -hmm. on the other side of the fence as you think. You know, and that's, I, I want you to be reflective, not only be optimistic about what you're going to, but be realistic and honest with yourself about what you're leaving behind. And then I think before you even make the decision, oh, I'm going to shift, I'm going to quit, I'm going to leave, I'm going to go somewhere else. Are there opportunities right where you currently are? Yeah. Are there opportunities? Maybe you work with a big organization and you don't like what you're doing in your present job. You may not have to quit and go find a new company to work for. There may be shifts inside of the organization that might be a lot more streamlined, a lot easier to step into than having to do a full-on job change. Well, and I think that ties into the next question mm-hmm. is, is the timing right? Because this is something, and, and look, I've... I'm not as young as I once was, but I still remember what it was like to be in my first five years of work. Yeah. And why do I mention the first five years of work? As you guys know, we subscribe to the concept of 10,000 hours to become a master of whatever you're trying to accomplish. You said something the other day. 
we are quickly approaching our five year mark of YouTube. That's right. So I mean, yep. we and I do feel like it has taken a while to learn this, but we have over ten years before that, you know, because we started in two thousand six of broadcasting. All of that worked, but it's the same thing with me becoming a, an accountant, a CPA, a financial planner. I had to put the time in mm -hmm. to develop mastery before I actually had a marketable skill that was worth something somewhere else. And I do worry when I talk about is the timing right, just because you're unhappy right now, make sure you have a long-term mm -hmm. mindset because there are some things that you have to put your time in just enough to get the mastery before it gets a lot better. There's whole careers mm -hmm. which are built on essentially – it, it, breaking through, young, you know, put, making people put the time in. I'm trying. It sounds so negative to no. say it, but it, but it is. There is something about paying your dues. Yeah, I, I don't disagree at all, and I feel like uh, it, it's unfortunate. I feel like that uh, whether it's the media or social media, or whatever it is. It has created this thing, hey, you should start living your best life right now. You should start living your best life right now. And while there are glimmers of truth in that, there is something to be said about, you know, early on, you might have to do the things you don't want to do. You may have to learn the skills that you don't necessarily want to learn. Every single day that you wake up and go to work might not be your best day. If you've been at a job and you just got out of college, you've been at a job for six months and you're like, oh man, I don't like this. I'm going to go start my own thing. I'm going to go start my own business. Perhaps you have not put in the time to be able to make that assessment well. Make sure you know before you do make that jump that the timing for what you've done up to this point substantiates you making the choice to leave what you're currently doing. And there's examples of this. I think about like doctors. What, what do they do with doctors? They make them go through a residency yep. where they... They work them a gazillion hours, you know, they're, they're kind of throwing them out there into it. I think about even my beginning CPA years. Mm -hmm. I mean, the first few tax seasons. Um, it's just a slog, I, I, right? I mean, they did comp time back then, which I think is somewhat illegal now. But, you know, you build up so much time that it would get to the end of the year where you'd have just weeks and weeks and they weeks say, of don't time. Come to they, work. Or they would, you know, during the holidays, they tell you, don't come this week or we'll pay you out. But it's. It's one of those things where you are worked like that. Investment uh -huh. banking's the same way. There's all kind of different professions that there is going to be a grind. And you need to ask yourself, am I in the grind? And, I, and if I just can defer my gratification for two years, three years, there's the big, uh -huh. beautiful thing I'm trying to get to. That just needs to be, you need to be aware of that. Yep. And I'm, I'm not trying to, because what I, I what breaks my heart is when somebody's put four years into something and they're so close to, to crossing a threshold, mm -hmm. but they leave right, right before the, the big break. That That's what I'm trying to do. Now, and it's back to if you're chewing your fingernails and you don't see an optimistic path forward, that's something completely different. But I do want to make sure in this new instant gratification society we live in, that you are being realistic about what the long-term perspective for this career is. And now, another thing that you have to think about, too, especially if you're thinking about quitting and starting something new or potentially if you're starting your own thing, is that potentially it could be an expensive decision. When we look at this, if you look at the median income by age, starting uh, in the teens all the way out to age 60, it's sort of this trajectory where as time moves along, as you get older, as you gain more, expense, uh, more experience, the median income tends to increase. Well, if you're someone who's in your late 20s or early 30s and you're making the decision to leave a specific industry that you've been in for the last five, six, seven, 10 years or leave a company you've been with and you've put that time in, you may be leaving right before you're starting to hit some of your peak earning years. Now, that's certainly not a reason to stay and be miserable and be unhappy, but it's certainly something you want to think about as you make that decision on whether or not the timing is right. Yeah, and that's what I also, based upon what I'm seeing here, what's going on in your personal life? Mm -hmm. I mean, because, guys, I'll tell you, it was much easier for me to start my first endeavor in my 20s than if I'd have deferred that out until my 40s yep. or some other time. Because, I mean, once you have you know, a spouse, you have children, other things. I mean, your your world, your whole outlook of life is different. So you do need to kind of take all those things into consideration to make sure the timing's right. But, and, and also don't find yourself, it's so easy in this new social media driven world where we look at what we want, but we don't see the journey that got there. That's like, right. I mean, because here's an example. I was talking, I was talking to somebody and they were talking about Graham Stephan. Mm-hmm. And they were talking about how great his life is living out in Las Vegas, having all this money coming um, his way. And I'm like, 
Yeah, I don't know that you, you, if you go back and look at those first two years of the grind. Or, 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 grind or, I yeah. mean, it, there's a lot of work going on behind in the background that you don't see. Mm-hmm. I mean, even who's the who's the social media guy that gives away a gazillion dollars and does all the shopping? Uh, Mr. Beast. I Mr. Think. Beast is the same way. Go yep. look at go pull his videos. Go to the oldest first. You'll see he was trying to find his yeah, voice during all that. It was yep. not the yep. easy stuff that we all perceive now. It's the same thing with entrepreneurship. It's the same thing. I think a lot of people think they're just going to walk through this threshold and it's going to be laid out. There's usually a lot of grind that goes into success. So, okay, so you have to answer the question, is the timing right? Uh, the other question you have to answer, and I think this is one that often gets overlooked, and, and I think it gets overlooked because this becomes an emotional decision instead of a well-thought-out decision, is are you financially stable? Have you taken the steps necessary to give you the flexibility to make a transition well? This is when I sound like a dad, <laughs> and I, I'll just go ahead and own it, is that um, because I think so much in society right now says if you have the passion, if you have the talent go pursue your dreams. And I'm like, those are powerful. Because look, to go, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur that's had many successful things. I've also had a few things that didn't work out. But sure. here's what I recognize that while we're successful versus others that have failed is that yes, I had passion. Yes, I had talent. But I took and saved a lot of money <laughs> to make sure I had enough bridge money or liquidity money to get me to the other side to reach success. And I think a lot of people will skip that step. They think the talent and the passion is all they need to be successful. And the reality is probably going to take you three years to build Mm -hmm. something really good or to replace what you left. And that's the part that I think people overlook because that's the unsexy part. That's the part where I have to tell somebody, hey, make sure you build up not just three to six months of cash reserves. If you're leaving to go start a new endeavor or to do something that's, that's, that's potentially risky, you better have extra cushion. You need a boosted cash reserves that, that's much higher than normal because you need bridge money. And because and most often things don't go the exact way that we always think they're going to go. And if you are going to make a big shift, whether it's starting your own business, moving into an entrepreneurial endeavor, or even changing industries, you have an idea of how that might go, but you don't know. There might be some unknown, unknown, some unforeseen circumstances. It may be a harder road than you thought. Well, if you don't have that financial stability, it is going to make it that much more difficult to stay the course. One of the questions we always ask career changers with us is say, hey, you know, there's a chance if you're going to change career and come work with us, there's a chance there's going to be a pay cut associated with that. What kind of planning have you been doing for you and your family to prepare for that? Because that's one of the things you want to see is that someone understands, yeah, I might have to take two or three steps back in order to take four or five steps forward. If you do that well, you're going to give yourself that future staying power if things don't go the exact way that you planned. Yeah, and I see this. Here's something else that I, I would I would encourage people. And this kind of this fits not only are you financially stable, but is the timing right, guys? If you're like, let's talk about let's break it down into short term. If within a year, do you have a bonus structure? Mm-hmm. Don't leave in October, November if you know you have a year end bonus yeah. in December. Don't leave in the year that you're. You know, if you stayed an extra six months, you would vest, vest completely yep. in a, in a pension plan or retirement plan. I, I find so often that I think people aren't taking into account all those different financial variables because they're going with the feel good, mm-hmm. passion, talent, and there's just more to it. This is you guys are financial mutants, so you understand there's some analytics that also need to be respected in this process. And then the other thing you have to do if you are planning on making any change, where there could be an uncertain adjustment to your income, right? So maybe your income might go down for a season or it might become more varied. Have you actually done the hard work of knowing what you and your family need to live off of? If you don't know where your money is going and what you're spending, it's going to be very difficult to know exactly how much you need to make sure is coming in so that this change, so that this decision keeps you and your family economically viable into the future. I like... It, what's so interesting to me is we, we are financial advisors, financial planners. We get to do this for, for a living. I think about how often moving to a new career, moving to a new adventure is similar to the advice we have to give to new retirees, mm-hmm. too. Is because the next question is, what will you be moving to? Because mm-hmm. I, I think the human nature, and this is why this is all interconnected, is the human nature concept is that we, we daydream about where we want to go yep. to, but we don't think about the fact of 
is that really as good as we have the the, the green pasture view of? Mm-hmm. I mean, we have this big, beautiful view. And you said it earlier, there's going to probably be a few more obstacles. There's going to be a, some sure. hiccups in the process. You need to, if you're going to actually get to that big blue sky opportunity, you're going to have to go ahead and do the planning on the front end so that when those hiccups, when those roadblocks, when those obstacles show up, you're prepared and you just you drive right over it. One thing I've heard you say before, Brian, is whenever you're doing any sort of projecting, whenever you're thinking about making a big life change, whether it be retirement, whether it be changing jobs, whether it be starting a business, you should write out your three scenarios. Yeah. Uh, start with the one that you think is the most probable. Hey, I think this is what's probably going to happen. I think this is the way that it's going to go. And have that be scenario one. Well, then you want to have, okay, well, what happens if this goes horribly wrong? What's the negative scenario? What if all of my assumptions are off? What if everything I've assumed was way too aggressive and it ends in the worst case? What does that look like? What's my contingency? What's my fallback? What's my base level? And then if you want to, you can dream about, okay, what if this goes exactly the way that I want it and even better? What's the ultimate upside? And make sure that you constantly review all three of those. Don't just focus on that best case scenario and forget that that worst case scenario can still happen. And if you can make sure that no matter which one of those takes place, you're still able to stay on that path, you're going to set yourself up for long-term success. I think here's the the power of a plan is, guys, it's very powerful financially. Don't get me wrong, because then at least if you go to a negative situation, you have the resources, you have a plan to, to move forward. But also, here's another thing a plan does for you. It's going to insulate you from the emotional side effects of negative yep. stuff to a degree is because you will have already lived or experienced this, at least on paper. And I'm going to give a, a strange experience here, Bo, and the fact that we recently, now this is a little premature, but I'll go ahead and share it. We, we bought a building. Oh. Um, and, oh. And, and, and no, but I think about it. Now, oh. we've owned this building for two weeks. We'll, yep. we'll give more detail later. Sure. And there's already been two... Let's just call them super issues. You know, the superintendent of the building would be like, "Wow!" So we bought this building, and it's already had two issues. Yeah, the superintendent uh, was <laughs> like that. It's uh, so, but here's what I, I've noticed: the more you experience the negative, it just seems like now, hey, if a pipe leaks, all, all right. right, you know, because I've experienced, I've, I've planned ahead, right. I, I've, I've prepared. The same thing happens when you create that negative plan is that it will, it, it's not going to completely numb you. I'm not going to take a diminish that it's life can be scary, mm-hmm. but you at least will go into it to where you don't just throw the whole thing out because you had your first hiccup or things didn't go like you thought. If you have a plan, it will insulate you from that. So you stay consistent. So you stay motivated and you stay on the path to creating success. And, and then with most things in life, begin with the end in mind. You know, what is the end goal? This thing that you are moving to, is it a step that's ultimately allowing you to move in the direction you want to move? If your goal is, man, you know what? I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm not spending enough time with family and I'm working too many hours and I don't feel like I'm paid adequately. Maybe don't take that job that's a pay raise and is going to make you work 120% more hours because that's not ultimately moving you towards that end goal. Continue to think about, is this decision I'm making, is this thing that I'm doing getting to me where I want to be at the finish line or am I coming up with a very permanent solution to a very temporary problem? Yeah. And that's what, um, and that leads us to kind of the closing out of the questions before we get into how you do this effectively mm-hmm. is what benefits are Mm non-negotiable now now here's the thing is i always tell people write down what success looks like for you so you you can kind of know how do you know you've done this well and i think a lot of people skip that step and every business conference you'll go to the one of the first exercises they'll have you do is write down what your ideal customer or client looks like they want you to go ahead and write down what are you looking Mm -hmm. to expand into but how often does that same logic expand to individuals with their jobs? I mean, because this is very important is what is your ideal job look like? What benefits does it have? I mean, has it got health insurance? Has it got a retirement plan? Write those things down. Advancement for opportunity. I mean, there's, there's all kind of, I, probably, I think opportunity for, I got those two completely <laughs> backwards distorted. But, but you see what I'm saying is that I want you, once again, 
turning the dream into reality requires documentation and planning ahead. And I think people skip that. Well, I think in order to even know what benefits are non-negotiable, I think this is a great exercise for everyone. You ought to sit and write down, what are the benefits at my current job right now? And it's easy to think about, okay, well, I have health insurance or yeah, they have a 401k plan. But really, what are the benefits? Is it a flexible work schedule? Is it the ability that, you know, if you have to be at a kid's baseball game or doctor's appointment, you have the ability to go do that? Are there things where you have a career trajectory, you know where you are today and you know what you can work towards three, five, 10 years from now? What are those current benefits? And if you leave this job, this company, this position, this opportunity, how easy can you replicate those somewhere else? Because Brian, we talk all the time, there's a a large uh, financial institution in the state of Georgia that we help them with their retirement plan. And it is one of the most generous retirement plans that we've ever seen in terms of what they do for their employees. And so every year when we do their open enrollment meeting, we remind them, hey, just so you know, Your employer here treats you guys incredibly well because they do this much for your benefit. We want them to know that if they were to change jobs or move somewhere or go somewhere else, another employer might not do that exact same thing. So make sure you have a true assessment of how good or how valuable your current circumstance is. Yeah, well, and some of those things that can see that don't have as much sexy sizzle can actually be some of the most valuable mm-hmm. things out there. And it is like a retirement plan because it's consistent. So, and that goes into income as well. There's a lot of people that I think they, they under-anticipate, they, they see the job has potential for big commissions, mm-hmm. big, you know, big p- high opportunity of high income versus the steady salary that's mm-hmm. coming in. Guys, there's something about something that's consistent and coming in to, to allow you to plan around and know versus the, the, the big, bold opportunity that there's a reason those things are big and bold is that they might have a high failure rate. Make sure that's built into your plan as well. Consistency can be incredibly valuable when it comes to building wealth and building wealth over the long term. You know, in the study done by Ramsey Solutions, they found that 80% of millionaires invested in their company 401k. So I'm going to say this a little bit differently. 80% of millionaires had access to a 401k and consistently chose to utilize that benefit and take advantage of it. So just know that there's nothing, while you might have the opportunity to go start your own thing and go have the big commissions and have the big windfalls, there's something to be said, just like you said, Brian, for stability and consistency through time, because that's a great way to build wealth. And and I think we have a unique perspective in the fact that entrepreneur type endeavors have have worked well, but I'm also not so caught up in the process of how sexy being an entrepreneur or a risk taker or a celebrity of, you know, somebody who's got athletic powers or, you know, powers, powers. or abilities, <laughs> powers. But, but, or, or musicians, <laughs> anything that can, because we've done, we've actually done the research with our annual wealth survey and tried to figure out who are clients and how did they create their wealth. And it's actually somewhat shocking how it's not through the virtuosos, it's not through the entrepreneurs, it's not through the senior executives. The lion's share, close to 70% of our clients, are because they're just savers and there's consistency once again. So that's what it goes back to. I don't, I'm not trying to diminish the dream because I, it would be very hypocritical for me to say, hey, don't go become an entrepreneur, even though that's how I have sure. had opportunity. But I do think people need to have the reality check of saying, that's not how most people do this. Don't let Instagram or somebody who's an influencer who has made it through that that tough blender of the first few years jade you into leaving something that might be your path to, to success as well. 